Hello, this is the Witch in the Glen. This is Alice. This is my channel. Um, I am going to do something a little different today. Um, I and I thought that y'all, um, I might. I'm kind of getting quote unquote called to um, channel it into a reading. Um, I'm just working on my working on my desk here. And um, I just wanted to, and I have a bunch of stacks of tarot cards out and it's sort of like, let's see, I have these upside down. So it's sort of like you have these stacks of things around and it's just the same as like if you have stacks of mail around, it just carries this heavy energy. Like it's not necessarily bad, but it's like these little books sitting around that all contain a whole different world of knowledge. And, um, let me even make sure if I'm filming. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm just thinking about, you know, there are several decks that are sitting here. This one is um, one of my most treasured decks, which is the Lover's, Lover's Path um, Tarot. See, and now I'm called to read with this one. But see, I have, that's what I'm getting at. It's like there's so many different things out that I, it's like I'm kind of pulled in a lot of directions. So you might be feeling that way too. Um, and this is like actually, um, you know, when we're talking about energy and trying to work with the energies, channel our energy, um, it is, this is, this is the same kind of energy that, that as, um, ancient Taoists refer to as chi, um, either spelled Q-I or C-H-I, um, and there's an energy practice called Qigong that's, um, that's what that's about. But energy is like, um, it's like everything's made of energy. Every, every single thing is energy. Um, which just means that it's like, well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it just means, um, anyway, so, but there are all these little energetic beckonings around and it's like this lover's path tarot is, has been sitting here bothering me because I cannot find a little booklet. And not that I necessarily always consult a booklet, but I like this one in particular because it tells the, um, and this is the card I always get stuck on, the three of coins. And I can't remember the myth there. It's Dana, Dana, Danae, D-A-N-A-E. And that's as much as I can really remember for some reason. Um, and that's the card that of course came out because I can't, um, I don't know, I was having a premonition about that card and then it came out and it's like, I need to find that little booklet. See, this is all stuff that might be happening for you too. I was gonna do work with this deck and first this deck wants to be worked with. So I'm just going with it and like letting all this, there's just like a lot of energy sitting around that needs to be channeled and dealt with. See, my incense just got carried away too. All right. Let's slow down a little bit <clears throat> and take deep breaths. Um, if you want to breathe with me, um, please do. Deep breaths way down into your belly. Most people just breathe up in the top of your lungs. And I think as women, we're always taught to keep our, we have, get these implicit messages to keep our stomachs tucked in, but you're really supposed to, it's everything's supposed to go out when you breathe and you breathe way deep, deep down into your stomach, which most women have to stop don't you kind of get or everybody gets trained out of it because we're all we're all trauma victims and that's what um that's what trauma does it takes away your relationship with spirit your relationship with your breath itself it's like your breath is your life um the mechanism of your life so we've got the three of coins let's see like i said um I, I would love, I will be so happy and joyful when that book turns up. Um, but in the meantime, I need to not, um, yeah, that, and that could be a message for you. Like, I'm going to be happy when that book turns up, but um, I need to be playing with these cards and enjoying them because I, you know, it's like I have a tarot language with God and he can speak through the cards even if I can't quite remember who Denia is and I don't even know if that's how you say her name 
um, Dene, maybe. Okay, here we've got, that's too many. Hang on. That's too many. Okay. This is an ominous card because it's been, um, okay. Let's see, Innocence, um, Tamino and Pamina. I love, <laughs> see, I love this card. That's why I need to be using these decks. Um, it's like my spirit made this, made these cards because this is stuff from my childhood that I love. So Tamino and Pamina, this is the magic flute, the legend, and um, he is blindfolded and they are, go through basically the bowels of hell to get and guided by music. Um, and, um, and to, you know, it's the ultimate quest of love and then they can have each other. Um, it's like they're right there with each other through everything that's been happening. Like you might be right there with like you might not be together is what I'm getting. Like you're not you're not able to see each other or perceive each other or be able to there's not a world that you can access while you're I mean like there's nothing there's nothing except for this turbulence and this on moving ongoing motion towards stasis, but um like peace. You know, they're trying to find peace so that they can be together. Um and that that's um somebody might have been hurting there's a lot of pain in this journey a lot of um a lot of fear um heartache uh illness nausea i mean you might have been feeling all these things um see and this is like i can't remember what this card what this legend is but it's such a um it's supposed to be a coming together and it just looks kind of but it seems like a crestfallen sad card to me so it's like this coming together that can't quite happen until they go all the way through hell guided by god which is the magic flute the um, essence of music um, and this is Mozart <laughs> who's genius obviously um, I mean you've heard that whether or not you've heard his music but um, the magic flute is beautiful they, and so Tamino and Pamina do get through hell and they get to be with each other um, so you know this can be a lesson to all of us um, about, you know, even when you're not with somebody and you can't see them in your life, you can still see they, they're they holding on to each other. They can feel each other. She can hear. Uh, so he's channeling the spirit and then it comes out in music form. He's the one who's manifesting the energy into our reality and um, basically guiding them. And she's and he can do this while she's there. They kind of, the fact that she can hear the music too um, is what creates this trinity, this like um, father, son, holy ghost scenario where it's, but it's like, but really it's about the trinity is about triangulating three different energies into this stability where they're mutually, um, they're exclusive in charges, but they depend on each other and they are inseparable. <laughs> and here we get Tristan and his old desire. That's, it's, that's beautiful. See, I just said inseparable. And so we have the legend of Tristan and his old and also an opera. Um, and <laughs> this is a, tragic Romeo and Juliet scenario beautiful where he's supposed to it's sort of like and here we have two like um two Lancelot scenarios where it's the knight who 
um, is in love with the divine feminine in this scenario, Guinevere or Isolde. Um, but he is supposed ultimately has been tasked with the with the job of um, carrying her to another person. So, or carrying her through, it's like Daenerys and um, Game of Thrones. I really don't like that show, but um, that's the archetype of that. It's like this, where, um, what's his face? Um, <laughs> what's his face? The guy who's in love with her, but then see this card. That's what this is about. This is a Daenerys and that's what's his face. And, but like, it's this beautiful, tragic um, story, but there, oh, this is the desire card and this is the judgment card. And so the judgment card coming after this, in, the innocence of this beautiful journey that they have, um, the judgment over here is like, is like there's an ultimate game master, an ultimate judge. Like they are really the ultimate judge of themselves. It's like here, Tannhauser and Elizabeth, I can't remember this this story, but it's, you know, this um, one is not, like she's not her without him. He's not him without her. They're just, they're so far apart, but they, it's almost, I can't remember if she's like a Rapunzel, if this is a Rapunzel scenario, because there's almost like this allusion to her hair being down, down here past the, um, through this hole in the, in the, um, like firmament of her castle that she, there's like a hole that you can see. Um, but it, it's like Tristan and this fellow, they're just both like committed to, her higher good, her best interest, so in love with her that um, they sort of, it's this self-sacrificial energy is what that really is. And that's sort of a, um, that creates this, this like um, palpable desire in these stories because it's this thing that we know isn't gonna quite get there. And so it's a way to trigger that feeling, the sensual feeling, but really love is not about pain. It's not about self-sacrifice. So they, there's, you know, if a story ends and you're sad about it, it's because it's not a real, that's not how the story should have ended. That's not the real, that's not the real story. That means in your heart, you know, the real story and that's not how it should have ended. Like Romeo and Juliet, for example. Um, but so in this case, Tamino and Pamina, survive unscathed completely in love with each other they were dedicated to each other's best interests the whole time and then they get to live happily ever after it's like the queen and king um so so it's more about like the partnership than the self-sacrifice of either one she's there also this element of like this objectification of the divine feminine where it's like she's not treated as an equal so because it's like because the divine masculine is a caretaking uh it's a caretaking role it is like a supportive implicitly supportive caretaking role but likewise the feminine is supposed to flow in her sensuality and she's not meant to be objectified literally it's like comes from being made into an object, turned into an object, which is like essentially, essentially it's like you collapse the waveform and make somebody into something that they're really not. And look at them, look at them as a static object, which is just something in your, just another thing in your, um, in your, in your point of view instead of being another equal human. So there's this element of that in both of these stories where it's like, that's where the tragedy comes from. That's why it goes wrong is because there's this element of self-sacrifice because, you know, this could have ended different, this could have ended different. And there's profound desire here, but you can channel that into a happy ending um, story. Cause like, look at that. I'm like, talk about desire. Like, look, there's like, 
just every element of life-giving energy all around them um, and they have a happy ending um, and they unite the night and the dark the dark and the light there's um, the queen of the night and the king is basically the of the sun so it's like her mother and his father have, you know they it turns out they're like the ultimate lovers too so it's kind of this holistic story but these two didn't quite get there um yeah five of cups in reverse didn't quite get there um why are these sitting over here um yeah the five of cups tragedy i mean it's kind of yeah look at that um okay illusion ivan and odette this is a tragedy too um of these two swans who fall in love um but one is of the night i mean and they look see there's the moon and these other um swans flying away and it almost looks like cranes that are flying this way though too if you look at it in a certain way um and so there's sort of the Im imagery of um let's see six of six of staves um so yeah that is like this mirrors our lancelot vibe that we get with these um and see she just loves him like he just needs to not bring him her back to his uncle he's supposed to bring he's promised to keep her safe and bring him back to somebody else to marry and um bring her you know bring her back to a different kind of life and restore her rescue her and and he never yeah i mean that's what i remember the six of staves that's like a lancelot kind of vibe too where it's it's like they were the real lovers but um there was like another force in the way kind of conventionality that's what like king arthur represents and that's what this like the king in here represents it's like this conventional old rule that does not it doesn't take into account feelings and i'm not talking about trauma feelings like that's pure love where there's no basis of like anything sexual tied up in pain there's none of that um which is that's what true love is it's like you can embody pure sexual energy without um having to process any pain through it um through sex if you don't and that's that's actual love um and then if you have that then you can um magnify it it's like <laughs> exponentially magnified that's why it's called making love because um which is i really don't like the term but i get what it's called that. let's see if we can have one more card here i mean i love the tomino and pamina um being the big card here and this energy of the three of coins moving into that where it's the stable stable energy of the trinity like they're both in contact with spirit and and it's like this is the old story over here with the Tannhauser and Elizabeth and Tristan and Isolde those are the old stories the Lancelot like that is not it's where that's a self-sacrificial male um who gives himself up for the feminine but then it's like if you self if you sacrifice yourself you are simultaneously taking away the one thing that means the very most to the person that you love like like it's the ultimate disgrace of love honestly and yeah this is the, and it's the Christ story it appears time and time again where there's like this masculine fear that makes them feel like they have to self-sacrifice instead of they feel like they don't are not good enough for love and so therefore have to sacrifice themselves see ten of coins that's lovely see and that it's beautiful um the ten of coins is a, a prosperous it's a ultimate success happily ever after look at all those hearts on this card these are such this is called the lover's path tarot um 
it's uh, one of my favorites. Um, but the Ten of Coins, um, it's a very, it's like prosperous, happy endings. Um, it's like, see, they're working their way, coming through this threshold and then out into their getting their kingdom. Um, and we're gonna collapse these waveforms because that is not, yeah, rest in peace over here. So let's put that away, y'all. And then we're gonna remind ourselves that this is the past, this is the present, and you are moving towards this 10 of coins in the future, okay? I'm gonna leave it there because that's really, I think that's where we need to, <laughs> it's so nice. Um, yeah, I think that's where we need to stop. Thank you.